In this video, I'm going to talk about Destiny 2 in greater detail, and specifically about the Scourge of the Past raid. This video is intended as an initial primer to give you all the essential details as quickly as possible. For this reason, I will not mention optional paths and secrets. Because of the volatile nature of bugs, glitches, and cheese strategies, I will only focus on legitimate mechanics in my explanations. As always, before you start each encounter, agree on the terminology and the strategy that you will use with your teammates. Be mindful that one team's common sense may be another team's complete lunacy. For this reason, doing a verbal rundown of the encounter before starting it with a new team will minimize chances of communication issues. You will want to bring the following items with you. 1. The most powerful, high burst damage weapon that you can find, most likely an exotic. Usual suspects include Whisper of the Worm, Darcy, Izanagi's Burden, Sleeper Simulant, and Xenophage, among others. 2. The best non-exotic shotgun currently in your possession. 3. Medium range energy weapons of every element type. 4. An accurate long range weapon of some sort, most likely a non-exotic scout rifle or sniper rifle. Finally, a ghost shell and a sparrow with perks that decrease sparrow summon and cooldown time. In the first encounter, the fire team must retrieve orbs from fallen berserkers and bring these orbs to designated locations. The locations are numbered as follows. Number 1 is to the north and distinguished with a rabbit sign. Number 2 is to the east in an area lit by a blue-green glow. Number 3 is to the south, known as Mosque or Dome. Number 4 is west, near a radio tower. Number 5 is known as Map, and is located where the team first begins the encounter. Traditionally, the far team will be split in two. Team Map will comprise a map reader, and usually a teammate who will escort and protect him. Team Ground will take care of orb retrieval. Locate the first Berserker on a rooftop south of location 1. Notice that the Berserker is invisible until approached and then vulnerable to attacks. When approached, he will generate a webbing field and two spots will glow red on his body, one on his chest, one on his back. Two players must shoot these areas simultaneously with shotguns yielding the best result. Once done, the Berserker becomes vulnerable and can be killed by all players. Let the map reader pick up the orb. Place the orb in the nearby generator to begin the encounter. A holographic map will appear showing the location of players, drop points, and berserkers. There will be multiple berserkers on the field. One of them carries two orbs. The others carry only one. The latter are not worth your time. Team Map will be under constant attack from enemy snipers, which you can dispatch with your long-range weapon. Servitors will also seek to approach the map area. If they reach it, they will disable the holographic map and block access to the generator until they are dispatched. The map reader must guide Team Ground to the right berserker. He will drop two orbs upon death. Pick one up, announce it, and wait for the map reader to respond with your destination number. Only then should you pick the second orb. It is important to stagger your pickups, as the map reader cannot easily tell who is who on the map. If you place an orb in the wrong generator, you die instantly. If you carry an orb and your destination is the map, bring it over as quickly as you can. If your destination is one of the other locations, your teammates must destroy two servitors at your destination. Only then can you place your orb in the generator. Once you have done so, you will gain the ionized debuff. If you pick up another orb while ionized, you die instantly. If you fail to deposit your orb before its timer expires, it will explode, killing you in the process. Be mindful that the orb carrier is not capable of dropping it. The only two outcomes are a successful deposit or death. Work quickly. The fire team has a limited amount of time to complete the encounter. If you run out of time, bad stuff happens. Placing an orb into the map generator resets the timer. The encounter is complete when you deposit the fourth non-map orb and the protective bubble near you disappears. Drop into the hole and make your way among the sewers to find the next encounter. 
There are no enemies, and you are at liberty to take your time. You will come to reach a chamber in which there are two fallen control panels. Striking them both simultaneously with a melee attack will start the second encounter. Get on your Sparrow. The encounter has no strategy and is purely a show of mechanical prowess. At least two players must make it to the end of the tunnel alive while being fired upon by enemy forces and while being chased by a flaming servitor. If the servitor catches up to you, you die instantly. Once two players have made it to the end of the course, disembark and once again strike two control panels at the same time to complete the encounter. The way forward will open. You will have to navigate a few tunnels and perform some light jumping puzzles to get to the next encounter. Once again, there is no time pressure and no enemy in your path. In the third encounter, the fire team must disable a protective barrier around the boss located in the center of the area. Split into two teams, Team Bottom will go into tunnels below the area. Team Top will remain at the surface. The area contains three generators, which are important for Team Bottom. Notice a large servitor in the distance. Killing the servitor will start the encounter. There are four paths to the underground, all of which are located near the center. Have one member of Team Bottom at the entrance to each a different path. Notice the electrical field. If you step through it, you die instantly. Killing the servitor at the surface will temporarily disable the field, letting you proceed. Team Top must destroy Shanks protected by an elemental barrier. You must attack them with the right element, as they are highly resistant to the others. Failure to kill them in time will cause them to invade the underground and impede Team Bottom. Once you have killed a wave of Shanks, the next wave will use a different shield type, cycling through Void, Arc and Solar in that order. The Underground is a circular tunnel lined with four consoles. Team Bottom must walk the tunnel, approaching each console along the way. You must find one that displays a shape upon your approach. A square, a circle or a triangle. Melee the console to activate its effect and announce which shape you have picked up. Each member of Team Bottom must pick up a different shape. It is possible that the console will not react to your approach. That console is inactive and can be skipped. It is also possible that the console will show a broken display that cycles through all the three shapes with a red glow. Let it be. If you melee that console, bad stuff happens. The members of Team Bottom must remain away from one another. If they get in close proximity, they will gradually lose health. This will be visible via the mention of the tethered debuff. To help avoid this, Team Bottom should agree in advance on which direction they will take when entering the underground. Once Team Bottom has picked up its symbols, it can announce it to Team Top. Team Top is to kill a new respawn servitor. This will reset the consoles in the underground. Team Bottom must once again walk past each console and pick up a symbol. You must pick up the same symbol that you picked up last time. If you pick up the wrong symbol, bad stuff happens. Once the second round is done, make your announcement. This time, after the servitor is killed, exit the underground and head for the generators, with each team member taking a different one. Depositing your charge into a generator will spawn a tank at that location. Get in and attack the boss's protective barrier. You must remain on the move to avoid incoming artillery strikes. For higher damage potential, use your micro-missiles. Firing them at the same time as your teammates grants them a significant damage bonus. Team Bottom will see the tank icon beneath their health bar turn red. Exit your tank before it self-destructs. This marks the end of the damage phase. Return immediately to the underground to start over and repeat the process. The electrical field will appear once again after striking the first console, or after about 15 seconds, whichever comes first. Once again, time is a limited resource. If the fire team takes too long to damage the protective barrier, bad stuff happens. Causing enough damage in one cycle resets the timer. The encounter is complete when the protective barrier around the boss has been destroyed.
In this encounter, the fire team must destroy the boss proper. Split into three teams, Team 1 and Team 2 will take turns hunting berserkers and depositing orbs in a fashion similar to the first encounter. Team Map will guide the others to the berserkers and dictate where the orbs must be placed. This time the layout is much simpler. Berserkers will spawn in buildings located around the edge of the area. The deposit points are the generators seen in the previous encounter. Number 1 is due north, number 2 southeast, number 3 southwest. Now is the time to equip your high damage weapon in preparation for the damage phase. You will also want to equip your non-exotic long range weapon to defend yourself against rooftop snipers and your shotgun to quickly defeat berserkers or servitors depending on which team you are on. Once again, a berserker will be available near the map to start the encounter. Let the map reader pick up the orb and place it into the map generator. Team 1 will begin the berserker hunt right away. Team 2 and Team Map must destroy 6 protective shields on the boss. One on each kneecap, two on its back, one near its right shoulder, and one near its left elbow. This is required in preparation for the damage phase. You must also keep watch for the appearance of a large orange-red cylinder on the boss as it prepares an attack. That cylinder is usually topped with a glowing bullseye symbol and can be found under the left arm, under the right arm, or on the back depending on the attack being performed. Destroy the cylinder to interrupt the attack and slightly extend your time limit before bad stuff happens. Failing to destroy the cylinder in time puts the fire team at risk. You generally have a grace of about two misses before the situation takes on explosive proportions. Team 1 will have become ionized from placing their orbs. This makes Team 2 the new Berserker Hunters, while Team 1 completes work on the boss's shields and clears all other enemies in sight, especially rooftop snipers. Once Team 2 has placed their orbs, a tank will spawn near each generator. The last player to deposit their orb should embark in one of the tanks. At this point, the entire fire team should gather into one place in preparation for the damage phase and attract the boss's attention to get it to face a favorable area in which the fire team can enjoy good freedom of movement and line of sight. For this, keeping the boss near the center of the area is ideal. Maneuver the tank and shoot the boss with it to stun him and begin the damage phase. The tank's job is complete, exit and join your teammates. The boss's weak point is the orb that has appeared from its midsection. Shoot the weak point with any average weapon until a bright pulse hits you. Stop shooting immediately. Look at your status to find which buff you have received. Continuous, angular or parallel. Change positions according to your buff using the CAP guideline. Consider an imaginary triangle in front of the boss such that continuous is at the bottom left Angular is at the center, and Parallel is at the bottom right. Two players will have each buff, and standing too close to a player with a different buff will cause a tether, gradually damaging them both. If you are in a proper position next to your teammate with the same buff, you will gain an extreme increase to your damage. Now is the time to use your highest damaging weapon. If you are unsure of where to go in the heat of the moment, then run away from your fire team. It is better to deal less damage than to injure a death from the tether debuff. The boss will emit a total of two pulses before the damage phase ends. Therefore, the fire team will have to shuffle its positioning twice. Once the boss's weak point retreats back into its midsection, the damage phase comes to an end and a new cycle begins. Yet again, the fire team has a limited amount of time to begin each damage phase. If you run out of time, bad stuff happens. Furthermore, the team has a limited number of damage cycles. If you fail to kill the boss after the fourth cycle, bad stuff happens as well. The encounter is complete when the boss is destroyed. The center of the area will open and let you onward to the treasure below. Open the chest, bask in your victory, and grow fat from strength. Use your sword, use your sword. Use your sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot.
Oh, my God.